to do that so it's like up or you can do that or if you want to give it a minute and like introduce yourself say you know hello or whatever and then roll with it great whatever whatever you're comfortable with okay you got a first timer here yeah it's easy it, it's like riding a bicycle if you bought a bunch of 16 year olds you can teach a bunch of <laughs> no doubt. Once I get rolling, you won't be able to shut me up. But yeah. <laughs> this is why I teach advanced placement uh, history. Every time I have a computer issue, those nerds can help me. Hell <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then, I don't know what they're doing, man. One time the guy's like pulling the lid off. I'm like, what do you Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, so we'll give this another, uh, another 45 seconds or so. Let some more people roll in here. Cool. Coach, real quick, you talk about the weather in Philly. You know, my boy's out there for the first time, California boy. And uh, first snow day, he's like, is that a thing? Can we go home? You know, because they're saying get out of here before it snows. And, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I've prayed for many a snow days throughout my years. You know what I mean? Like, God, make sure it hits right around rush hour, please. That's <laughs> yeah. uh, cool. Yeah, I've talked about coach like, well, Ryan, yeah, when he first got out here, you know, he had the – he had the Colgate experience. He went from California to Western New York. Wow. Oh, right. It makes Philly look like friggin' Malibu. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Coach K, if you want to go ahead and give uh, the intro, you guys are good to roll. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Aaron Kim. I'm a member of the Board of the Directors of Southern California Football Coaches, uh, Coaches Association. Excuse me. And it's my honor and privilege to introduce our next speaker. Uh, Coach Tom Sugden from St. Joseph Prep Academy in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's the offensive coordinator, and he's going to be speaking on variations of the power run game. So, Coach, the floor is yours. Hey, thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Um, you know, it's an absolute honor, right, to be speaking here at the SoCal Coach Association Clinic. Um, big thanks to Coach Scott Morrison, right, for uh, linking not just me, some of my other coaches from uh, St. Joe's Prep. Uh, into the clinic and um, I'm super excited to get this thing going. So let's roll. All right, so we're going to be talking about variations of the power run game, okay? My coach said, my name's Tom Sogg, the offense coordinator, St. Joe's Prep, Philadelphia, PA. My cell phone down there, my email, my Twitter. Listen, I'm an open book. Uh, I'm in the position that I'm in because of, uh, you know, I stand on the shoulders of the men who came before me and guys who would sit down with me and allow me to sit in their meetings and go to their clinics. And, uh, you know, so if I if I move, you know, 45 minutes, a short amount of time to, to teach anything. But as I'm rifling through this stuff, if there's anything that doesn't make sense or you would like to, you know, dive deeper on, please reach out. Uh, shoot me a text, shoot me a call, whatever it is, okay? And um, I'd be more than happy to sit down with you and talk ball. Um, this is my 10th year at St. Joe's Prep. Um, I started out, I was coaching pound ball straight out of, straight out of uh, college. And I had about 12 players on my team and I was having the time of my life. Um, a college buddy of mine, who's actually our head coach right now, he's speaking at the same time as me, Tim Roken was coaching at St. Joe's Prep. Said the offensive line coach, uh, the current offensive line coach had to travel for some work in the summer. They wanted to know if I'd come down, help out, with an extra set of hands. Uh, from that point on, they haven't been able to get rid of me. So uh, 10 years later, I'm the offensive coordinator, right? Uh, I've been blessed. I've had great mentors. Gabe Infante, who's the running back coach at Temple. He was our head coach uh, who started this thing uh, when I got going. And um, He's a coach's coach, right? He didn't just coach his players. He made sure he developed his, his younger coaches. And uh, he was an open book to us, which allowed us to grow, evolve, and become the best versions of ourselves. So that's something that I definitely want to carry on as, as I go through my journey in, in this coaching world. And, um, you know, I've been blessed to uh, be a part of this program. We've won the last three state championships here in Pennsylvania, six overall in the last 10. And that's because we've had, a, you know, great support from our school and we've had great players, right? Um, good men, right? And I'm going to say, you know, we're, we're good coaches or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, we just have great men and uh, great kids with great work ethic. So when you get that recipe right, the good things will happen. So we're going to talk about power, okay? Uh, at St. Joe's Prep, right, our entire offense, right, is surrounded by 
or evolves from inside zone and power, right? All I'm ever trying to do is make sure I protect power and inside zone from our run game, or excuse me, from our RPO game to our play actions, to our boot series, to our screens. You can draw a line all the way back to power inside zone. And that's kind of like our foundation. That's our roots, right? And that's where this offensive thing goes, right? Now, we're in our drop back, you know, drop back's an exception, obviously, right? But everything else surrounding our offense, it's going to come back to power and it's going to come back to inside zone. You know, power's God's play, all right? I was told that very young. I don't know where it came from, uh, but I love power, right? When I played in college, that was our go-to play. And my, uh, I played for a small Division II school in the Poconos up here in the Pennsylvania called East Stroudsburg University. And my uh, offense coordinator would, he would, whenever we would install this, he'd say the same thing and he'd yell it at the offensive lineman, down, 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 kick out and pull through. Is it really that hard? And it, as I'm playing, I'm like, hell yeah, it's hard, man. I got to move a defensive tackle, snap off on a linebacker, all this. But from his perspective, the simplicity of the play, he didn't overthink it. And as I got older and became a coach and, and, and an offensive coordinator, it really like stuck with me. Um, and it's a program play for us. If, if, if you were to interview an offensive lineman, a wide receiver, a linebacker, a D back from 10 years ago when I first started, or uh, any one of those players that are currently playing me for today, they would, they would tell you that power is our play. Third and one, what's coach gonna call? He's gonna call power. And uh, it's ingrained in our DNA. It's definitely an attitude. And um, since, since it's our play, right, we're gonna, we're gonna prepare. We're going to prepare our players for every var defensive variation we might see that, uh, you know, obviously defense coaches are paid to take things away, take away your best players, take away your best play. Um, we're going to instill confidence in our players with preparation. You know, uh, this allows them to play fast and physical. We don't want people thinking out there. We don't want paralysis by analysis. We want guys flying around confident as hell, right, and being nasty SOBs. Um, you know, we had a moment in our first state championship game where Coach Infante and I, you know, it's third and one. What do you want to run? Power, you know, power without a hesitation. They know it's coming. He snaps back at me. Now, Coach Infante is a defensive guy. I looked right back and I was like, I don't care. Nobody, we don't care. This is who we are. And I knew that we prepared that play better than any other play in our offense. And if we were going to, you know, go down, we were going to go down with this play. You know, luckily for my job and my career, we, <laughs> we were successful on that play and we were able to uh, pull off that W. But you know, we don't care. You, you know, you talk to anybody in our league, they'll tell you about how we run power. It's a culture, right? It's our standard. It's, 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 it's a simple play. It allows us to be intelligent, allows us to be physical. It really summarizes who we want to be. What is gap blocking, right? And we start from the, from the beginning, okay? Real simple, right? Not to, not to dumb it down too much, right? But gap blocking is the game blocking angles, right? And double teams for our alignment. We're going to leave the end man line of scrimmage, right, to kick out. We're going to pull a backside lineman for the front side linebacker, right? And, uh, you know, this frees those front side linemen to block with angles back to their inside gap. We want them to play fast, man. We want them to be confident in, in their rules. We don't want to – I don't want to give them a bunch of different, you know, this, then, but. Um, I want those guys to be able to come off and displace people. Um, at times, it provides opportunities to double-team people, right? And, you know – Everybody, right, you got your ace, your douche, your tray, your king, your queen, your jacks, whatever you want to call your double team combos, we have them. I'm not going to dive into that. That would be a totally different uh, clinic, and we would be here for hours and debating it. And, you know, as much as I do love that, uh, that would take away a lot of time, as you guys know. Um, when I started as a young coach, I came out and I started teaching double teams right from day one. When we installed a uh, gap scheme, I would start off with double teams and I wasn't getting the results that I wanted. And, and the thing that I finally realized was by me teaching uh, double teams first, I turned our gap play into a man play. And all of a sudden the double teams were just for men and we didn't have any gap responsibility and we didn't have any gap integrity. Um, gaps will always override people. And, um, it's important that our players know from day one that no matter what happens, that um, they have to protect their gap. Don't chase the man, right? Press your gap. If color's in your gap, press that color. Um, it's, it's super important that you instill that from day one 
or you're going to have run throughs all day long. Right. Or when teams start sparking the nose or twisting and stunting. Right. It's, it's going to get really complicated for you. Um, trying to get them to get away from that man tendency. You know, our gap scheme, right? Play side linemen. The reason I love this, because no matter what, um, if it's counter, if it's H counter, right? Or if it's power, we're going to have a simple rule. It's gap down backer, very wing T-ish, right? I played in wing T in high school and, and, and it's simple and it's effective, right? Our first priority is going to be our gap. Is a defender line up in, in, in your gap? Yes, take them. Don't overthink it. Priority number two, right? Can you down block, right? Is there a defender lined up over top of the lineman inside of you? Yes, take them. Priority number three is the backer. Is the gap vacated? You can't block down? Climb to the backer, right? This allows me, right, to manipulate, kick out guys, pull through guys, fullbacks, tight ends, wings, right, and keep the play side lineman as consistent as possible, right? Block those gap with your eyes, press color, feet before hands. I don't want guys not moving their feet, lunging into holes, okay? We're not going to get the movement we, we want. So we got to make sure it's uber important that we stress that we want our feet underneath of us, our feet through the gap, and we want to displace people horizontally or vertically. I really don't care, right? If you knock a lineman 30 yards to the sideline, I'm good with it. If you knock them 30 yards vertically, right? I'm good with it. As long as you displace them out of your gap, you run your feet, you take them on the tracks he's on and you own your gap, we're going to be in good shape. Kick out, pull through, okay? The kick out player, all right? He's going to attempt to kick out the end man on line of scrimmage at all costs. He has to go full speed, all right? The kick out player traditionally is a fullback, right? Is an H back, right? A guard on counter, okay? Um, but no matter who that kick out player is, he has to be all in on kicking that player out. If he's kicking out right, he's going to hit right, near foot, near shoulder. Um, the offense coordinator from Gonzaga did a great clinic last night on uh, fullback kickout blocks. Um, it, was, it was really good. He went deep into it. And uh, if you're looking to find out more about kickout blocks, I would highly suggest you check him out. Um, if a defender bends and crosses face, right, we will use his leverage against him and log him. All right. Be a big theme of the rest of my talk, right, as I talk to you about our variations is logging. Okay. And what we're going to tell our kickout player to do is to read the defender's shoulders. If his shoulders are square, right, upfield, we're going to kick him out. All right, he's probably a boxer, right? If they're turned, right, if they're facing the sidelines, okay, he's probably a bender, a spiller, right, a burster, whatever you want to call him. Understand that, right, the exception cannot be the rule, meaning – I can't have my player, right, focusing more on logging than he is on kicking out. Logging is something we react to, okay? It has to be full speed for it to be successful. If you attack the end man line of scrimmage, expecting him to come underneath, you're not going to come off as fast as you need to, right? You are definitely not going to be the hammer. You're going to end up being the nail, right? And you're going to get yourself hurt, a running back hurt, and you're going to blow up our play. Our puller, right? Pull right, hit right, right? We're going to work inside out. If that end man on the line of scrimmage, he bends, all right, we will gap exchange with the kickout man, right? So what happens is the end man on the line of scrimmage, right, when he wants to scrape, exchange, gap exchange, bend or burst, okay? Whenever he's doing that and he's crashing into the line of scrimmage, you're more times than not, right, unless there's a, a mess up, there's going to be a linebacker, right, flying over the top to contain, right? He's going to build a fence, build a wall, right? Pull will work for the contained defender and the play will bounce one gap over. The running back is tethered to the puller, right? So when that puller bounces one gap, the running back should instinctively be lined up on the inside hip of that puller and it should drag him to, pro to, to green light. Log bomb. A lob block is when a blocker uses his inside shoulder to seal a defensive end to the inside, right? A blocker will use his momentum against him and slingshot the defender, right? We call it shake and bake. I don't know if you guys have ever seen 
Talladega Knights, Ricky Bobby, right? You know, when they slingshot each other up, you know, we say, you know, that's what we do, right? Slingshot, slingshot, right? We'll look for the slingshot. So that's something fun that the kids like gravitate to. It's something for them easy to remember, but we're going to shake and bake that bad boy, right? And slingshot him inside. Blocker is going to wall off the defender to the inside so the play can go outside behind them. The poor and the running back needs to recognize this and adjust their pass, right? What I was just saying in the previous slide. And it needs to be drilled daily, all right? The best results are on bags, and you have to control the defense. We do our log drill every day, okay? And I'm going to control the ends. I'm going to tell them I'm going to be very prescriptive on what I want them to do. Because if, if I don't, it turns into a competition period. And you and you, and, and you don't get the work you need. You don't get the work you need. And and what happens is the full the, the confidence that you need to instill into your H backs and your guards, right? You don't get it, right? Because now they're just trying to compete against their buddy, right? And they're just trying to make sure that that they, they, they don't beat them, right? You want to really it's a fine dance. So you start with it. It's almost it's 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 a little bit more than a walkthrough. And then we just climb to 50% to about three quarters, right? And we never go full speed on this, okay? Because we're just going to lose lesser. We just need to understand the feel, the look, right? And then we have inside run where, you know, all bets are off. But the log drill, right, it needs to be controlled. If you can control this, you drill this every day. You instill that confidence in your blockers so they're able to perform on the field and make the necessary adjustments so you can handle the games the defense is going to play to counteract your gap scheme. Prepare to win. Gap checklist, okay? All right. We watch film. We sit down. We talk. Are they benders? Are they bo or are they boxers, right? Simple question. Or are they both? You can do both, right? And if they're both, why, do, why are they both? What situation, right? is are, are they trying to spill our, our, our gap scheme? Or, or what situation are they trying to box it and contain, okay? Is it a down the distance thing? Is it a formation thing? Is it a, uh, you know, where we're at on the field? Things you need, questions you need to get answered on Mon Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, right? Not, not Friday night. Do they burst the bubble? Meaning are they just gonna line somebody up there in a spitter stance and just run him up field to try to disrupt, right? Are those linebackers heavy flow? Or are they downhill, right? Meaning, are they going to open up laterally, right, to build the wall over top? Or are they going to fight downhill, right, and scrape over top, right? There's a difference there, okay? And it depends how tight, right, those linebackers are going to be, right, which will help your puller understand, like, hey, all right, that guy's going to be a contained guy. He's probably going to be one yard outside of the, of the spiller. That's going to help him kick him out. Or if he's going to be scraping over the top, he might seal that linebacker in. All right. Other question. Where are the dudes? Okay. If they got a war daddy, I want to know about him. Right. I want to know what his weaknesses are. I want to know what his strengths are. I want to have a plan to trap them. I want to have a plan to double team them. I want to have a plan to read them. Okay. If I don't go into the game with their best player schemed up that way, I'm not doing my job. I'm not preparing my guys for success. So it's really important, right, that you have a plan for their best players because we've all been in a situation where one dude disrupts the whole flow, the whole game, and you feel like you didn't have enough answers, right, to, to counteract that, that guy. How, do, how, do, how does tight ends, H's, and wing players influence the defense? Um, you know, if, if I'm in a sidecar and a pistol look with a fullback, right, you know, what, what does that do to defense? If I take that sidecar fullback and I put them in a wing position, right, how does that make the defense adjust, right? I want to know all those variables, okay? Where's the leverage and don't fight it? Are they trying to make sure nobody beats them inside? Are they trying to contain everything outside? Listen, I'm a simple man with a simple plan, right? I ain't that smart, okay? If you're trying to contain me, right, and not let me get outside, I'm going to run the ball inside. If you're trying to spill me, right, and not allow, allow me to run the ball inside, I'm going to go outside, right? Where are the numbers? Where's the least path of resistance? I'm not going to overthink this thing, okay? And I think it's important that you have that figured out before you get into a game, right? So you're not chasing your tail on the sidelines. So this is pretty much our gap exchange offense. And these are our answers, right? For when people are trying to take power away from us. Obviously counter and H counter are a big part of that. Um, so, you know, they're always gonna be a staple of our offense, but these are the little wrinkles I do with our power game um, that, that gives us an advantage when teams are trying to take it away. 
I call it power X, right? And, it, and it's just it's just exchanging gaps, man. It's gaps, gap exchange offense built in answers, right? Where when we're getting burst or spilled, right? My kick out guy is going to end up down blocking and my puller is going to pull around, right? We're going to exchange gaps as well. If you're going to take away my gap, I'm going to exchange for another gap. Power fan, right? That's just an arc release by tight ends, you know, as old as time, right? If, if they're lining up in a, in a six technique or a seven technique and they're really trying to control my C gap, I'm going to play that def that six or seven techniques rules against them, right? I'm going to fan that tight end out, right? We'll have him arc release for the nine technique or an outside linebacker. And if that seven technique or C gap defender, right? If he's not respecting my tight end arc releasing and he's just slamming down hard, we're going to run outside. But if he's caught up, if he's, if he's coached up well, he's more times than not going to get a hand on that tight end when he feels him working away, right? Because he's not sure what's coming. And that's all we're looking for when we run that play. We're just trying to make sure that that C gap defender has a little bit of hesitation that he has to think about something, right? So he can't come out, right? Piss and vinegar on us. Uh, the next thing, power solid, okay? This is this is like my big sets, right? Um, where I play two fullbacks. And what I tell my offensive linemen or tight ends if they're in the game is there are no double teams. We're short splits, right? And everybody is in gap control mode. Block your gap, 1,000 miles an hour. You know, I want to see the white in your knuckles, okay? There is no pass play, all right? And we're going to own our gap. We're going to wash everything down. We're going to build a running wall. And I'm going to use those two fullbacks in my back, backfield to be the kick out and pull through guy. And then power G, right? Power G, right? G lead, uh, press, okay? It's a hybrid of that. It's something that we made our own. Uh, you know, if I sat here and I called it G lead, somebody would tell me I'm wrong. And if I called it press, somebody would probably tell me I'm wrong. All I know is it's what fits our offense. It makes sense to our players and we have success to it. And I was told a long time ago, it's, Right, 10,000 different ways to skin a cat, man. So, you know, um, whatever whatever floats your boat from a terminology or, or a coaching point standpoint, as long as you're coaching that with extreme confidence, and the most important thing, as long as your players believe in what you're teaching, right, you're going to be in good shape. Um, protect your best plays, right? You take anything, right? You know, Coach Morrison talking last night, right? If you can take anything away from my clinic today, right, protect your best plays, right? really do an inventory on how, like what you really believe in and how are you protecting that day in and day out and, and, and how you protect that becomes a part of your offense and it needs to be worked now, right? It can't be a wrinkle that you put on Tuesday or Wednesday because you've seen it Sunday watching football or something that you've, you know, picked off a, a, off a YouTube clinic or something like that on the fly. It has to be something that you grow with your offense, you grow with your players because at the end of the day, it might make sense to you, right? But the confidence that your players need to play at the level that you want them to, right? They're not gonna they're not gonna be able to get there, right? In a couple of days, in a week, right? If anything, it takes usually three weeks. You put something in, it's gonna take three weeks for those guys to get accustomed to it. And um, that's a hard lesson that I learned as a young coach when I would try to be like, oh, we can do this. Oh, wait, what if I do this, right? And, and what I was doing is I was selling my shelf short. I should have been spending more time just practicing inside zone and power than trying to find easy answers, okay? There are no easy answers. The only way is through, okay? You can't cheat football, you know, and don't fight leverage, man. You know, I see so many times I watch games, I see people just, you know, running their plays and the overloaded defensive fronts or like stop yourself, right? Calm yourself down. Really think about what the defense is trying to do to you and and, and go the opposite way, right? Or It's simple as that to me. Um, like I said, simple man, simple plan. All right, so we'll watch some film here. All right, my first clip here, right? We're just running straight power, man. And this is this is from 2013, and um, you know, back when we weren't nothing, we didn't have, you know, as as a as a Gabe Afonte tenure, we didn't have a lot of success. Um, you know, seven, four and seven, seven and four, right? We weren't really uh, rattling anybody's cages, so we got a lot of base defenses, gap control defenses, base fronts, and as we started to get um, 
you know, solidify ourselves as a legit program and, and team, you know, that's when defenses started trying to take away our best plays, scheming us up and spending a little bit more time on us. But these were simpler times, right? My play side tight end, my play side tackle, my play side guard are going to build a running wall and they're going to seal the backside of the defense. Fullback's going to come through and kick out. Puller's going to come around. We're going to get that nice tunnel, right? We want that running back tethered, right, to the inside hip of our pulling guard. And we want him shot out of a cannon, man. By the time he hits that line of scrimmage, I need to see him hit third gear. Now, I've been blessed. I had a lot of good running backs. That number one there is Alameda Zacchaeus. If anybody's any Falcons fans, he's a, he's a wide receiver for the Falcons. So uh, having guys like that helps you out, too. Right, base fronts, right? I got two two techniques, two five techniques, right? I got six, I got six blockers. They're giving me six guys to block. I don't see this anymore. Uh, this is the good old days. But same rules, right? We're gonna get a great deuce here. Okay, by my right tackle, right guard, snap off on that backside backer, kick out the MLI scrimmage, pull through. Great tunnel, right? That's the easy stuff, okay? That's the stuff, right? If they line up like that, I'm very confident, right? We're going to be in good shape. Okay, we're playing St. Peter's Prep here. They had a hell of a front seven. We played these cats, and they spill and bend and burst like mother effers, okay? And they do a great job at it. So it it, it was a tall task for our players, right, to be able to, to work their scheme. But what gave me, you know, I was really proud of this team because we were overmatched from a talent standpoint. And... Um, we just, we just ran our stuff, man. We owned what we do. And you'll see my fullback here. All right, Cooper Kim, 32. He shot out of a cannon, man. And when this nine technique here turns his shoulders, he doesn't hesitate, right? He doesn't slow down. Now, he's going to use his leverage against him. He's going to pin that upfield shoulder, okay? And he's going to accelerate, accelerate his feet, slingshot him in there, bang. Now my guard, right? You can see the little hesitation in him, and you'll see you'll see a couple plays from now where uh, he's a sophomore here when he's a junior and he's flying around this edge, but he still gets the job done. I don't need a hero block, right? He's trying to find that contain guy. Okay, he gets around, seals him, running back gets in the hole. We get ten yards in the first down, right in the fourth quarter, and we're trying to choose some clock and win the game. Playing St. Peter's Prep again now. We're at Rutgers University, okay? Uh, same cats. They had the same cats come back. Uh, a couple Notre Dame line, uh, linebackers, a couple Division One defensive linemen. Um, you know, the one thing that I haven't experienced at St. Joe's Prep in 10 years is I haven't had anyone show up and say, I want to play fullback, coach. I just haven't had it, right? I mean, that's just it, – it, it was a dying position as, as the spread took over and – we evolved into a, a track meet, but there is a place, right, for gap scheme, downhill, power football. And as long as I'm coaching, right, I'll be carrying that torch. I promise you that. So what how, What have I done to find fullbacks? I'm going to take my fourth or fifth best linebacker, all right? That's where I, where, I, where I, I mostly get my guys. But I've had a lot of success with my backup centers for whatever reason, right? Um uh, it's a sophomore, this Kit Kat right here, Max Fisher. He actually started for me two years at center the last two years. He's graduating in a month. Um, he's a sophomore here, overmatched. You know, couldn't crack the line of scrimmage because we had senior leadership up there. And, you know, how I, how I present it to guys is, listen, man, I need you to do three things really well, right? I need you to kick out, pull through, and log. If you can master those three techniques, I have a role for you in our offense. Or you can play JV all year, right? And that's fine too, right? But if you want to dive in and be a little uncomfortable, allow me to teach you, you know, the correct techniques and how to handle it, uh, you know, playing the age position. Um, you know, you can find a role. And, and I, what I found is those guys who are just on the cusp of playing or maybe a year away, right? They're perfect for that, for that fullback position, that H-back position, whatever you want to call it, right? Because they're chomping at the bit. 
They're trying to prove their medal, right, to their teammates, to their coaches, right? And they're trying to show us something. And I knew he was going to start for me and replace my center after this play. Uh, this was his first game playing this position because we actually had a couple injuries. And, I, uh, you know, he was forced into action more than anything. But he really surprised me, and he had a hell of a game. You'll see a couple clips of him really doing a fine job here. You see the seven technique, right? He's going to rip, right? He's going to rip and cross my tight end's face. God bless Max Fisher, right? He doesn't hesitate, right? He turns off field and he goes hunting. What he finds is, is a Notre Dame linebacker, number five here, who's a hell of a football player. But, you know, you know the story, man. Sometimes you get the bear and sometimes the bear gets you. And this time the bear got him. Uh, what? This is back into the left. Whew, right. I mean, that's just physical. And he's given everything he's got all 215 pounds of them at this point as a sophomore. Okay. You know, and he, and he's, he's physical, right. And he's relentless and he's, and he's, he, he, you know, he's sacrificing himself for the betterment of the offense. And they're the type of guys you want on your offense line. They're the type of guys you want blocking on the edge for you and fullback. And uh, it's a pretty special deal. Same game, same fullback, right? Same play. This time they line him up in a nine technique. He still bends. Now, for this to work, he has to be full speed. If he hesitates at all, my 300-pound guard, right, he's going to take out the guard, right? And in this defensive end, this spiller is going to get a two-for-one special on me, okay? So there cannot be any hesitation by our H-back, all right? He has to just react. He has to react. And that's why it's important when I was saying earlier that you instill in these fullbacks that you have to be shot out of a cannon at this guy because if you slow down at all, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. And that's why I hammer in their heads, you're kicking them out. You're kicking them out. You're kicking them out. And really, it's it's like your ripcord. It's your parachute, okay? At the last second, oh, crap, I can't kick him out. Pull the, pull the ripcord, right? Log his ass, okay? All right? And the guard, right? You need to get there because the guard needs to see you doing that so he can build the wall around them. You'll see him even put his hand on his back and kind of, you know, ricochet him, like slingshot himself forward. Those linebackers get caught up. Don't get caught looking, right? They thought that thing was going to get caught nice and tight. We're going to be inside here, right? Once we log that guy, our running back, Marcus Mason, realized that takes it one gap over, right? We hit it in the alley. We hit pay dirt. Second and two, right? End of the game. We're running power, man. We're running it all game. We don't care what you do, how you try to take away from it. We got the answers. Our guys are confident. They're prepared. You see the linebacker building the wall. My guard gets around, right? He opens that thing up. We sneak in through there, right? And we don't get tackled by safeties. Third-level defenders don't get drawn up on the chalkboard for a reason. Okay, I know there's some special safeties out there, but they're far and few in between. Our running backs aren't allowed to get tackled by safeties. If they try to tackle, you run them through. You run through them right through their chest. You make them pay. <clears throat> now this is this is a uh, this is the same play. It's power, right? But now I got them in 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 the wing position. Okay. Just by his heaviness, right, on his inside foot, his in, uh, on his down hand here, you can tell he's probably leaning inside. He's going to cross face. Our fullback here, Jack Crossett, right, he's going to attempt to kick him out. Right when he crosses face, he's going to flip his hips, log him, seal him inside. Essentially, he's just turning it into a down block. That's all he's doing, okay? The main thing here, it's a little bit easier when he's in that H position, okay, because now I don't have to worry about that collision by the guard and the fullback if my fullback hesitates when he sees you know, uh, that end bursting underneath. But here, my fullback does a great job, right? Takes a settle step. He crosses face. He seals him inside, drives him down, right? Seals him in. My guard gets around, finds the uh, the contain guy, right? The scraper, seals him, right? Look at that hole, right? Only the umpire's there, okay? And also, when you got number seven here, that's DeAndre Swift, all right? That helps as well, right? Played at Georgia. He's currently on the Detroit Lions. Um, made the best high school player I've ever seen. So when you get a guy like him, 
Whoa. Right. Uh, he makes your offensive line look good and a pretty special cat. Okay, so here we are, right? We're in a, you know, 22 formation here and uh, they're bringing it, okay? They're bringing a cat blitz right here, a corner fire. All right. Um, my fullback is looking at this defensive end right now. We're running power, right? He's looking at this uh, defensive end. He's not looking at this corner, okay? But this is what I'm talking about being reactionary, right? He's going like he's going to kick him out. He disappears. And you can see his head snap. Head snap, right? He finds him. He tries to spin inside. He lobs him in. DeAndre sees what's going on, right? Pops over one gap, right? We're off to the races, right? We just made chicken salad out of chicken shit, right? That place should have been dead in the water, right? But we were able to know our rules, right? Uh, and not, not fight leverage and make it happen. Everybody, right? That log drill is important. Your running backs are a part of that log drill, um, you know, because they have to build that great relationship with your pullers, right? And they have to understand what we're trying to accomplish. Here we are again, right? Now we got this guy in a five technique. He's lining up inside uh, of our H back. You know, he knows it's going to be a down block at this point. All right, it's a, it's, it's, it's not a log. I'd be foolish to call this a log, right? It's a down block. He down blocks that guy. It's a long call, right? If we get this, we're making a long call to our backside guard. You know, he's pulling an extra gap over. Okay. We're going to use him. If you're going to spill, man, we're just going to use your momentum against you. This looks like a hell of a down block, right? It's really not. It's really not that great of a down block. The defensive end's running to the sidelines, right? And we're just ushering him. We're just escorting him. We are not fighting leverage. Here's H counter, right? Look out of H counter, right? Where our guard will be the uh, log man. Right? Right when he opens up the pull, right? He sees number 72's here shoulders, right? He's facing them, okay? This is easy, right? Accept him into your inside shoulder, flip your hips, log him inside. Now, my fullback knows he has to get around that and find the contain guy, right? I don't like the little pitter patter he does there, but he finds it. Our running back here, DeAndre Swift has great patience. As you see, burst. And then that's special right there. I'm just not going to catch him. Right, the next way, right, we're going to uh, protect our power play, right? Our next variation is going to just be arc release. It's just going to be fanning the guy, okay? You see here, right? We got this defensive line, defensive lineman right here. This defensive end lineup in a six technique, and this dude was a bad dude. Okay, he was a state champion wrestler. He had great leverage, and he just played with a mean streak, right? And we knew this is the first play of the state championship game in 2019 that uh, he was going to come out. And he was going to come out hot. So we wanted to fan. We wanted to arc, arc, arc release on this guy, right, to see if we could slow him down. Right, right when my tight end takes that outside jab there, right, he's taught. He's got to get hands on that tight end. And when he does that, it allows my fullback, right, right, a, a chance of kicking this guy out, right? Not a great matchup, right? That's their probably their best defensive player versus, you know, not my best offensive player, right? He's able to slow him down. He can't come off the ball like he wants to. We're able to pull around, get through, right, and start off the game, right? With a 16 yard run. Just trying to use their rules against them. Okay, I don't want to overthink it. Here we are again, right? Same formation. We got a 359 or defensive front. I got a 359. Not great to run power out of, right? I'd rather run counter backside or do some type of variation, right? A fan, right? A G lead, something like that. You see, when my tight end fans out, right, the hesitation here, he pauses. Just gives my guy an opportunity, right? Gives my guy a better opportunity at success, right? The guard's able to get around. We're able to get six, seven yards. We'll take it every day.
Arc release again. Right now it's not a nine technique. They're sitting in a four four. It's the strong safety or sandbacker, whatever you want to call him, right? We're gonna arc release to him. Right? Their defensive end thinks he needs to touch our tight end. Gives our fullback a chance, right? To seal him outside. We pull around. We're off to the races. This, uh, this is our power G scheme, okay, all right? And, um, you know, it's a little bit different. To the back side, we're going to zone off, and I'm going to pull my front side guard now. My right tackle and right tight end, gap down backer, okay? And now my play side guard is going to be the kickout guy. My fullback is going to be the pull-through guy. Now, their responsibilities can change based on the defense alignment. If this outside backer here is lined up inside of my fullback and he attempts to burst. He's going to down block him, right? Log him inside, and my guard's going to pull around. If he contains, right, my fullback's going to go inside for that play side linebacker, and now my guard's going to become the kickout guy, all right? We're just trying to find the least path of resistance here. He tries to burst the bubble. All right, my H-back seals him in. My play side guard pulls around. We were playing this team as a state semifinal game. You know, we were we were having our way with power, and, you know, we were very successful that year with it, and they had a great game plan to take away from it. You know, uh, we didn't – you know, we, we ran power okay versus these guys, but since they were so focused on taking it away, you know, we had a lot of success with this play and a couple other of our variations, right, to keep them off schedule. Now, what's important on this play is, okay, same thing as press. I want my tail back here to take this first, his first three steps are going to be exactly the same as power. I need him to invite those linebackers in. All I need them is to hesitate and take a step, which they do. Now, I don't need my guard to get a hero block on a corner. Just make them deal with you. You make them deal with you, we're out. Don't fight leverage. Here are my fullbacks able to get underneath this outside linebacker here. Okay. And now they exchange. Okay. Now my guard's going to, right, since he's he's bending here, we're going to log him, right? My fullback goes for the play side linebacker, right? If you eat my pizza, I'm going to eat your pizza, right? It, it doesn't really matter, right? As long as we're getting hats on hats. Downhill, bounce. Here's the same play. Now, instead of logging him, we're actually able to kick this guy out. And now since we're able to kick this guy out, look, look how it, it changes the path of my tailback. There's no need for my tailback to bounce anymore because we kicked out the edge defender. Now he's going to just stay true. It's one gap. It's an off tackle play. That's all it is. It's one gap over than traditional power, right? And, you know, he sees that right when he sees that guy get kicked out, that he's not going to bounce it. He's just going to press it downhill. Same deal again, man. Nothing special. We run over safeties. We don't let safety tackles. This is a mess up. I'm just showing this because of the indecision we have on this one, right? This is tailor made for this play, right? I really want my fullback, right, driving down to this play side linebacker. I want my play side guard wrapping for this cat. But my fullback, right? I was just singing Max Fisher's praises. He gets, he had some choice words said to him. I'm on the sidelines after this, okay? He takes the outside guy. My guard realizes it halfway through, right? Tries to peel back. It's a wrap. But listen, they were expecting power. The hesitation, right? You see the backside backer, the will here, take two steps forward. You see the mic, right? He just doesn't burst, right? He, he's thinking. You can see him hesitating, right? And since I was able to get that hesitation, right, we were able to get to outside the edge and Get a positive play. All 
right there, outside linebacker. You know, we're playing Harrisburg High School in the state championship game. For whatever reason, they they let us leverage him with our H back. Uh, so they don't really have a, a, a great contain player here. So we were trying to run this scheme and get outside and take advantage of that soft edge. You know, for whatever reason, that cat started backpedal in there. Um, this cat here is playing at Texas A&M, and he just brings the absolute wood. So we were trying to find ways where he could not get downhill on us and take T off on our running backs or linemen. He hesitates for a split second, right, with that with the power downhill action, right? That downhill power action by our running back, it, it, it really holds those cats, right? He's, he's, he's trying to figure out what it is. He sees a, a guard pulling to the outside. The running back's coming downhill, right? It really puts him in conflict. Hey coach, we're right at the five-minute mark here. Zachy, let me get through you. I want to talk about our power plus play. This was, you know, this is what I was talking about, the all-gap special, okay? We're down in Marietta, Georgia, right, playing a hell of a ball club, and they're going, you know, for you Madden players, they're going to gauge eight on me, man. They're bringing the house, okay? And um, we came to this play because – what happened was I was pulling my backside guard and teams started really sparking the nose to the backside A gap and blitzing the backside backer through the B gap and trying to track us down to the backside. It was keeping me up at night, right? Uh, we got stopped on a, on a fourth and one in a championship game, right? And, you know, our scars define us. So I said, screw it. I'm not pulling anybody, right? And I'm still going to have a kick out and pull through guy, right? And they're just going to be my fullbacks. Okay, and when I get in these formations, I'm going to take my two best players. That's Jeremiah Trotter Jr., our start middle linebacker, right? We're going to bring him out for this. Our, our, our Sam backer, right, Liam Johnson, who's playing at Princeton University, right? We're bringing him out for this. I want fast, right, guys who are – I want our best players for our money downs, right? I don't want to leave any anything on the shelf. So the play side, we're going to go right here, okay? Our play side fullback has power rules. He's kicking out. Simple. Our backside fullback here has H counter rules, right? He's going to jab, right? Pull through, okay? We got power on the – or excuse me, our, our running back here, he's going to run counter footwork, okay? And um, we're going to keep it as simple as possible. You see here, Marietta brings three guys off the edge. We always take the most dangerous, and we work inside out. My fullback, he's going to Princeton for a reason, smart guy. He didn't need to block all three of these guys. He knows if he blocks the most inside guy, the other guys can't get to him. We get a jab there, right? We're nice and tight. We're building a wall with our down linemen. We're getting great movement at the point of attack. Trot gets through, right? Steals their mic, right? And not only do we get the first down on fourth and run, right? We, we bust it for a 20-yard explosive play. This state championship game, all right? I'll leave you guys with this one, right? It's third and three. We're up 10. They're about to get the ball back. We don't get this first down, okay? We're going bread and butter. We're going big. I want to take all the thought process, process out of it. We are There are no double teams when we run this play. Absolutely not, right? Gap, get on your track. Be tough SOBs. You get great push at the point of attack. Awesome kick out. Great wrap there by our pull through guy. Touchdown prep. So I know I motored through all that, right? It was a lot of information. I tried to touch on, on the main points. Um, appreciate you stopping in, right? Listen to me talk ball, right? Talk ball all day with you guys. I can't believe 45 minutes flew by like that. Um, like I said, if anybody wants to jump on a Zoom, right, talk more about this, you know, tell me how I can improve my scheme. Hey, man, I'm all ears. I want to evolve. I want to get better, too. Uh, so if anyone's interested in that, please take my contact information down, right, reach out to me, and, um, you know, to make each other better. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Coach. Appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for having me, Coach. Have a good one.